um, today we're talking about um, a topic in South Africa that's been under discussion probably for about three years, uh, the drought conditions that we've been facing and um, how Christian has taken his own composting system and readapted it to help our vineyards to fight the drought conditions. So we're going to be looking at the deep bed compost system and then we're also going to be tasting our Circle of Life White 2016 as well as the Circumstance Syrah. Okay, so in 2014 we had a lot of rain. I remember it was like a river coming down and then the drought sort of started kicking in 2015. Yeah, about that time. Okay, and then rainfall wise, what do you think we sort of got in? Because 2016, 2017, mm. there was mm. really like next to nothing. Yeah. How many millimeters did we get? Yeah, so usually we would get about 700 mils in yes. this area. Mm. Um, but that has gone down to 550 mils and even just, just below that. Okay. Um, so a lot less. Mm. Um, very strong winds that has mm. accompanied the, the drought. Uh, that dries out the soil mm. uh, when the, the when the cold front comes over the ocean it yeah. just blows it right past the farm yes so you literally see the rain coming you see it go so yeah this is a very very dry area a cool mm. area being so close to the ocean but a mm. very dry area yeah and then 2020 so far is looking positive we had yeah. what last yeah. week so we had just over 150 mils in the last oh, month it's great um, eh? we're so only in july now so yeah. Yeah. june June, Sorry. June, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's hope uh, that the uh, pattern keeps continuing. Keep continuing yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's stay positive. Okay, yeah. great. So you're gonna take us through your uh, composting. Um, so first of all, this is where the magic starts. Yeah. So can you tell us what's going on here? Okay. So I used to make compost in the old uh, con conventional method, where mm. you get a whole lot of green, uh, uh, green and brown material, carbon mm. and nitrogen material, and you would pack it in layers in big rows called windrows. Mm -hmm. And then you would add sprinklers to try and uh, humidify it. Yeah, yeah, and so that the compost can start breaking down or humify. Yeah. And then you would turn it into a compost turner mm. um, and uh, try and make compost that way. I mean, that mm. is the conventional way of doing it. The problem that we had with that was each time we turned the, the windrows or the compost rows, mm. uh, it would dry out. Oh, yes. So with and the wind, wind yeah. yeah, with the wind, it would dry out. And also, you see a lot of um, uh, of the nutrients would go up into the atmosphere. Mm. You just see the steam going and mm. you know, and then you sit in for dry compost pile again. Yes. And also, um, we don't have a lot of water here. Um, we can irrigate maybe six hectares mm. of about almost 120 hectares of, of vineyards. Mm. Uh, so I don't have water to, s to use for sprinklers on yeah. compost. Yes. So I had to really um, look at the old ways of making compost mm. without using water and uh, mm. using livestock manures and things like that. Mm. And this is where this system okay. um, came into being. So the old ways, how did you find this? You just started Googling and talking to <laughs> old farmers yeah, yeah. or... Speaking a lot to old farmers. Yes. And one interesting thing that we learned was in the olden days, they used to have um, tree, a thing called tree fodder. And tree, tree what? Tree fodder. Okay, tree so, fodder. So a lot of people these days, they make hay and straw and or, or lucerne bales. Mm. But in the olden days, cattle and sheep used to eat a lot of tree foliage. Okay. And they would even have um, um, ash trees and um, uh, um, oak trees that they would cut the branches off, mm. uh, dry it out okay. um, as hay, tree yes. hay, yeah. and stockpile it in big sheds. And that is what they would do um, in the winter or when there's a drought to feed the animals. Okay. And the system is very simple. I mean, all the nutrients that the tree um, uh, accumulates through the season is in mm. its leaves. Mm, of and when the fresh leaves fall in autumn, mm. that's like a um, little little lunch packets for, for, for goats and sheep. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. And different kind of micro elements that they're getting in from the different plants. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, what we then did is to help this, that system along, we got rid of all our sheep, because mm. sheep mostly are grazers, mm. and we got goats. Um, okay. Because goats are browsers, they, mm. they eat about 60% up here, yes. and only 40% down at the bottom. Mm. So that automatically, already in a dry system, mm. works better. Yes. Then we got rid of all our European bred cattle, and mm. we get got in Guni cattle, which is indigenous cattle, yeah. which like goats, like mm. tree, tree, tree foliage. Um, okay, so they go up. This. So we're sitting with animals that are much more browsers than grazers, mm. and we get a lot of compost material from from the Somerset West community and from mm. the local community because you know it's a very tree-rich area. Yes. 
And uh, um, yeah, how the system basically works is the garden refuge service brings the material in. Mm -hmm. I've got two trained guys that just take out all the poisonous plants. Oh, it goes straight into the, the goat's paddock mm -hmm. and then the goats strip off all the, all the okay. leaves. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So you're going to show us all of that? I'm going to show you all of that. Yeah. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> so now we're standing here by these super cute little goats. Can you tell us um, how they are incorporated into this composting system, please? Yeah. So um, the, the local garden, the food services bring all the material into the goat camps. Mm -hmm. The goats strip off all the leaves. Yes. Um, well, not all the leaves, but <laughs> most of it mm. um, as, they, as their food. And then we, we, we take out the... Um, the branches the next morning mm -hmm. and that we throw through a chipper mm -hmm. and uh, or we even chip inside the camp depending on the space okay. and then the chip material of the branches which the goats haven't eaten then comes mm -hmm. back and becomes the bedding or the floor of the of the night paddock okay so yeah. this set up here this set up here okay. and uh, at the moment this one is about a meter deep but it will yes. sag down yes. as the material breaks down mm -hmm. um, and then we'll add more more material Okay. But the goats will, will be um, sleeping in this paddock for about uh, two to three weeks. Yes. And their manure, which is a very high in potassium, mm -hmm. and the NPK value of the urine will actually humify yeah. this compost. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to use any water and we also don't have to use any mm. fertilizers and things like that to break okay. it down. Yeah. And these are Angora goats, these eh? Are, these are Angora goats, yeah. And where do they come from? Ooh, so they come, from, I think, from, from Persia, really. Yes. Um, and, uh, uh, a breeding ewe was um, smuggled into South Africa years ago oh, okay. and uh, it, uh, they did very well in the Karoo areas where mm. it's very dry. Yes. Um, so a perfect um, animal to use mm. now the Western Cape is getting drier and drier every year. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they're gorgeous. Yeah. They're adorable. Okay, so uh, here you can see we're standing right by the, by the deep bed system. Mm -hmm. um, now what's wonderful is all the leaves that has been stripped off the branches and even when the goats get out to the to the vineyards to graze on the weeds, mm -hmm. all of that material they bring back to the to the night camp mm -hmm. as manure. Yes. And uh, and uh, I mean there you can see um, some goat manure mm -hmm. uh, and all those nutrients that's in the leaves and the weeds and the vineyards that come all back to the compost heap mm -hmm. and gets distributed by the goats. Yeah. And uh, it's a very nice system because you don't have to pack layers of carbon material, mm -hmm. nitrogen material like that. It just all gets mixed up um, yes. as the goats work through this. Mm -hmm. um, here you can see some goat manure. Yeah. And we don't have to add any water. Um, you mm. can see it's uh, rained yeah, last week. Yeah. And everything is still nice and, and wet. Mm -hmm. um, quite warm underneath because it is heating up. And if you smell the compost, oh, it is warm, eh? you can smell that there's no uh, putrefaction. There's, although there's a lot of nitrogen, there's mm -hmm. no stink mm -hmm. here. And the reason is because, and I'll show you later on, when the goats move out, the cows move, come in, mm -hmm. which brings a different type of bacteria. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And eventually what happens is you see this white fungus, which is mm -hmm. in the compost. Yeah. Now that white fungus is streptomycetes, mm -hmm. which is a natural antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And that cleans off all the anaerobes. Yeah. It sort of almost, uh, um, not sterilizes, but cleans the compost. So it dominates, that, probably. It dominates, yeah. Yes. So that the aerobic mm -hmm. microbes can take over. Yeah. So it goes from... From, from sm smelling like goats to smelling mm. like mushrooms and then yes. st starting to smell like sweet soil, basically. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so uh, how long would the goats be in here? So the, the goats will be in here for about two weeks. Okay. Um, and then when the goats move out, then the other animals come in, which I'll go and show you now. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah. And the whole process, okay. how long does it take more or less? Yeah, so um, I would say what we do is we, we stockpile these camps right through the year. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a winter thing. Yes. Uh, but for, for the summer, there's no rain. So mm -hmm. we'll stockpile the manures for the year. We'll even add mm -hmm. some milk away from our cheesery, mm -hmm. bring in a bit of lactobacillus just to ferment some of the manures. EMs, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when, the, when the rain comes, I would say every year by August, Mm -hmm. uh, we make about uh, 380 to 400 tons of compost. So Ooh, it's a lot, eh? it takes the whole year, but in August, mm -hmm. September, we, we the, the, the system is done mm -hmm. and they have enough compost to do half of the farm. Okay, and the idea of this compost is the nitrogen, phosphor, potassium, yeah. and also the carbon, eh? The carbon is number one. So the, mm -hmm. the most important thing is we want carbon in our soils. That's mm -hmm. the foundation of our soils where everything else gets built on top of. Mm -hmm. So number one is the carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way that we make it gives us a quite mm -hmm. a decent NPK value. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. uh, which you wouldn't really get in uh, in a conventional mm -hmm. um, composting system. And the idea of the carbon, it increases your water holding capacity. Water holding capacity, but also mm -hmm. it, it, it gives an area for microbes to live off of. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's and, essential, that's the whole And foundation. the microbes digest your shoots and your weeds and everything that the horses plow in. Mm -hmm. And that gives your soil a metabolism. Mm -hmm. And the healthier the soil metabolism is, the yeah. healthier the soil is. It's almost like mm -hmm. your own stomach. If, yes. if you've got a strong metabolism, mm -hmm. then you also... Your flora. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the microbes also then mix up your soil a little bit and... Yeah, as well. mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, and everything that you put out on the on on the farm. So if you do in, use any fertilizers, it gets used to the optimum. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just lie on the soil and get mm -hmm. burned by the sun. Sun. Yeah. Everything that that in a living soil, everything that falls on the soil becomes soil. Mm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. The circle of life. Circle of life. <laughs> so this is stage one, and then I'll show mm -hmm. you stage two of, of okay. when the goats move out of the. So this is your next step in the composting process. Yeah. Eh? Using your cows. So what? How do you use your cows here? <laughs> so very much the same. After about two weeks, we move the goats out. Mm -hmm. We add another layer on top of that of, of, of uh, garden refuge material mm -hmm. for the bed. And the cows then manure on it. Okay. Now from, the, from the, the urine from the goats and from the cattle, we get the, mm -hmm. the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Mm -hmm. A little bit more potassium when the goats are there because their manure is high in potassium. Mm -hmm. But the cow has got four stomachs yeah. and their rumen contains a wide di diverse mm -hmm. uh, um, population of microorganisms mm -hmm. um, and uh, their manure is basically the microbes that's going to work the compost okay. yeah. so um, and then um, after the cows moved out um, mm -hmm. which is about another three weeks we yeah. add another layer mm -hmm. and by that stage we find um, the rhinoceros beetle the grubs um, yes come into the compost and that's because we use a lot of wood mm -hmm. and we especially use a lot of wood in our compost to encourage fungal growth mm -hmm. so more wood more fungus to break down the cellulose yeah because we want a fungal orientated compost in the end yes. but because of that we get the rhinoceros beetle grubs yeah which can be a bit of a problem but the pigs love them Yes. So um, when the goats move out and their, their, their microbes start working the compost, mm -hmm. the pigs come and they actually turn the compost looking mm -hmm. for those grubs. Yes. Um, and while they're also turning, looking for the grubs, they are mixing the manures. Yeah. So you don't have to use any Some machines to turn. Yeah. yeah. And they do actually eat some of the cow manure, mm. which um, is, oh. is very good for pigs. The enzymes in cow manure is, yes. is very good for, for a okay. pig system. So the whole system works mm. very nicely together. And then the microbes from all of the from the cow manure yeah. that actually breaks down the plants that as well yeah, yeah. into the carbon source. Correct. Yeah, they the okay. workers that physically go and eat up all the yeah. material. Yeah. And then the manure from the pigs that will just add nitrogen as well. Eh? It, it would, but what pigs do is they're actually very clean animals. Oh, so yes, although yeah. goats and, and and cows will mm. manure all over the paddock, mm -hmm. a pig will go and choose one corner okay. of the camp. And that would be the toilet. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So the pigs are exclusively mm. for turning. Yeah. And their manure would it would benefit, but it mm. you would have to go and fetch it. Yes. Yeah. So. And the turning period, did you say now? How long does it take? How long? Do you well, we, like I said, we built these camps right for the year, okay, and yeah. the system just keeps going, keeps going, mm. keeps going till everything is humidified. Okay. And then once a year, we, we bring in the digger loader. This is mm. the first machine that we use then. Mm. And it scoops up the material. Mm -hmm. By that stage, we're sitting with a pH of about 5.5, 5.6, without mm -hmm. any, any lime. Yeah. And that's just because of all the aerobic bacteria. Mm -hmm. And it goes from there straight to the vineyards. Okay. Um, so with the young vineyards, we'll actually drop some um, piles of, of compost and the horses will work it in. Mm -hmm. For the older vineyards, uh, we've got a, a Rumex spreader mm -hmm. that drives down to the camps, gets loaded, and yeah. goes straight into the vineyards. So. Okay. Yeah. okay. And visually, how do you know the compost is ready? Well, when it's comp uh, well, when it's about, I would say, um, seventy percent humidified. Okay. Yeah, we don't want the compost is completely broken down, mm -hmm. and we also don't want raw material. Mm -hmm. But when you take the wood and you can press the water out of it, so yeah, it's like almost like a like a sponge. Yes. Um, and when it smells sweet, mm -hmm. there's no putrefying. And also, we, when we test the because we are certified with EcoCert, we have mm -hmm. to send the the compost away for analysis. Okay. to make sure there's no residues of chemicals, oh, that yeah. the pH is right mm. um, and uh, that also gives us an indication of the NPK mm. value at that stage. Mm. Uh, but uh, mostly it is visual and the smell okay. that tells us when it's right. But, okay. uh, but we, we don't want a completely broken down compost because we want the microbes to have something to live mm. off of 
in yes. the soil. Yeah. Uh, or to, to oh, what, when you put it into the vineyard yeah, to keep right. it alive. Yeah. And just quickly, what type of cows are these again? Yeah, so these are Nguni cattle. Yes. So they evolved in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the original um, African cattle. Yes. Um, and th what's nice about them is they are immune to a lot of the parasites and, mm -hmm. and diseases that European cattle will get. Um, okay. So although they, mm -hmm. they, they, they can eat shrubbery and fynbos mm -hmm. and that type of things, they're yeah. also very hardy and, and we don't mm -hmm. have to use any uh, medicines on them or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, no fly strike or pink eye or any uh, tick problems with them. Yeah. And the baby, how old's the baby? Uh, <laughs> she's hiding behind the mom now. Yeah. Uh, but she's about uh, um, no, about five six months old. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. So I poured you the circle of life white, which I feel fits into this whole circle of your compost. Yeah. <laughs> but for us here at Vatercliff. This is our only estate white which we produce and then we produce the red as well. So for the 2016 vintage, it's a co-fermentation of Sauvignon Blanc and Chenin Blanc. And then we add in a little bit of Semillon later on. It's all whole bunch pressed in our modern basket press, sorted in the vineyard as well as in the winery. And uh, with the co-fermentation, we feel that we blend the two varietals in quite nicely from the start and then the semillor some years we add it some years we don't add it it's really just dependent on making the best wine that we can make so that's the circle of life and yeah this is a, this is a proper farm tasting today yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the shenan comes through quite nicely on the nose mm. that sort of stone fruit and then that fresh acidity from the sauvignon just lingers so it's such a nice uh, pairing wine with food because it's so diverse. There's so much complexity in this wine. So great, that's it. Circle of Life White. <laughs> so we're standing here in our Circumstance Syrah block. And um, as you can see, Christian also put down some mulch. So can you um, tell us a bit about the reasoning why you did mm. that, Christian, and a bit about the block, please? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, we had two um, Shiraz block, blocks, mm. one facing um, south. Mm -hmm. which gets the cool sea breeze mm -hmm. and we had one facing straight mm -hmm. north yeah which mm -hmm. was knackered by the <laughs> by the wind and the sun mm -hmm. and uh, um, the one this block just mm -hmm. made exceptional wine so we mm -hmm. pulled the other one out and we decided to give this one a little bit extra TLC mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, the block is quite steep um, mm -hmm. and that means that there's more water at the bottom or more moisture at the bottom of the block than mm -hmm. higher up yeah. And uh, um, when we packed out all the mulch for our young vineyards, we decided mm -hmm. to pack half of this block, uh, mm -hmm. the top half with a mulch, um, mm -hmm. to just bring the block into balance. Uh, with ripening With as ripening well. and mm -hmm. all of that, just to keep a bit of more moisture on the top of the block mm -hmm. and leave the bottom as it is. So, so this is the cooler slope, the south facing yeah. slope. Um, soil wise, this is predominantly? Yeah, so this is a compacted sandstone. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. once again, that nice and uh, very nutritious Heavier, mm. heavier soil, yes. holds water very well mm. and it's got a good um, yellow clay underneath. Mm. So you can say it's a cooler kind of soil as well because it's not like the granite that gives yeah, off a lot of Yeah, it's definitely cooler. Yeah. Mm. And I think that also contributes to the wine because the wine is, if you smell it, it's quite perfumey yeah. with the cooler slope yeah. but also with the soil that's not giving that yeah. much heat. This is, this is an interesting block because it is, it is really on the, right on the line. Mm. of where the compacted sandstone and the mm. granite meet yes so so yeah. so yes it's it's compacted sandstone but there's a lot less rocks than mm. you would find in a compacted sandstone yes so it's like a sandy uh, mm. clay almost um, okay yeah so yeah. it's you can actually plow it very nicely with the horses mm. it's very really nice workable arable yeah. soil yeah. and this was planted in 2005 this eh? was planted in 2005 okay. So winemaking wise, um, I always love it when we pick this um, block because it's just below the glass box. So I can check the people <laughs> from the glass box. And it's so nice when the horses bring the grapes to the winery. And you guys pretty much just pick this block on a day yeah. to make sure there's not a lot of raisins or anything going yeah. through. Yeah, of course it's, it's dry land. I mean, there is irrigation yeah. in, but the irrigation was put in when the block was planted. Mm. It hasn't had irrigation since 2011. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really uh, dry land, um, mm -hmm. and when we do, when we pick the grapes, we every bunch is picked, looked at, <laughs> assessed, mm -hmm. and then yeah. either discarded or thrown into the. To the and tonnage-wise, we get about what three, three and a half tons a hectare yeah, yeah. if we're lucky. Yeah. 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 
depending on the year. Mm. Um, but for the 2017, um, that year we saw quite a bit of the droughts effect. So I think we were probably down to about two to two and a half tons yeah. a hectare. Um, and then in the winery, well, we pick everything into small picking crates. Um, we don't uh, put too many grapes in to not squash it. Um, and then, yeah, we sorted through it again in the winery on our sorting table, a shaking one, and then via gravity put it into our wooden fermenters. And this, um, with the whole bunch fermentation, we uh, stomp it by feet. Stomp it about twice a day, but we taste it every single day and determine maybe we'll do a delastage. We want to incorporate some oxygen. Maybe we want to stomp a little bit longer, etc. And we left it on the skins for over 30 days. From there, ran it down via gravity. And um, we determined when to press according to taste. So with winemaking, it's about tasting in the vineyard, tasting in the winery, and uh, press the grape skins in a basket press and um, combine the press component with the free run and left it in barrel for over 18 months. Um, older 600 litre barrels. It's just um, beautiful fruit. So you don't want to overpower that with um, expensive new yeah. oak. Yeah. Um, and we just give it a basic filtration and put it to barrel. Mm. So with the aim of expressing this beautiful vineyard site, cooler climate, um, and the, if you taste the wine, the palate structure is just so nicely refined. Mm. And that is because it's good vineyard site. And also when you pick it and how you process or how you extract throughout the winemaking process is so essential. So that's it. Sigmund Syrah 2017.